What's the number one thing that can separate you as a photographer from all the other smartphone users out there? Personally, I believe it's all about knowing and understanding the controls of your camera and being able to use that to your advantage. So today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what is Aperture and how can you use it in your photography, what kinds of settings or scenarios are best for which types of Aperture, and ultimately how can you get the best possible images using this to your advantage. Now what is Aperture? Aperture is that tiny little hole that allows light to pass through your lens and create an image. So the Aperture or the F-stop is marked by these various numbers on your camera or maybe in a digital screen if you're using a digital camera, but it is the numbers such as like 1.2 or 1.4, 2.8, and it goes all the way up to maybe a F11 or F16, F22. If it's a larger opening, you're going to get more light through there. And if it's a smaller opening, you're gonna get less light in there. And how that affects the images, of course, if you have a larger opening, you're gonna have a much more blurry background, only your subject's gonna be in focus. Whereas if you have a smaller aperture, you're going to have a lot more depth of field and everything is going to be in focus. Now, a lot of cameras will give you the option of also shooting in aperture priority mode. This basically means that you can decide which aperture you want to shoot at and it's going to arrange everything else in the camera settings, whether it's ISO or shutter speed, to basically match that so that you get a well lit image. Now, I personally like to shoot fully manual, but especially if you're just starting out, this is a really good way to practice and kind of get a feel for aperture, how it's affecting your images and what it's actually doing. So actually, I will just give you an example here. Okay, so I'm out here on my balcony and I'm just going to show you guys exactly what I mean about the different apertures and how it affects the picture. And it is a really ugly and gray day. We're going to use this dead plant here. <laughs> Yeah, I can't grow plants, but I can take pictures. And I am using my Fujifilm X-T3 in aperture priority mode. And this lens goes from 1.4 to F16. And here's what they look like when you put them all side by side. Can you see the difference? So the ones that have the smaller number but larger aperture have this bokeh or this blurry effect and only the subject is really in focus. Whereas, as I mentioned before, the smaller the aperture or the larger the number, the more depth of field that you have and the more that everything is going to be in focus. So what you want to take into a consideration is, first of all, the composition of your image. Do you want everything to be in focus? Do you want a shallow depth of field? How do you want that to look? And the second thing you're going to have to pay attention to is your lighting conditions. Are you outside in really bright sunlight? Do you need very little light to pass through the camera because it's already so sunny? Or do you want to open it up because you're shooting at night and you need a lot more light to get into the camera so that you can still handhold your camera while you're taking the picture and it's not going to come out blurry? I can highly recommend possibly trying your camera in aperture priority mode, playing around with it, getting a feel for it, and just seeing how the different apertures affect your images. Now, in which scenarios are you going to want to use the different types of aperture? That's really up to you, but for example, most people will use a larger aperture with this more soft background and everything when they're shooting portraits, when they're sh shooting details or they want to get really close up on something and just kind of want everything else to be blurry in the background or in the foreground. So those are scenarios where you would really want that shallow depth of field. It can really hone in your focus onto whatever it is that you're photographing. So the subject is the main thing that you want to bring out. So when would you use a smaller aperture? For example, this is great when you're shooting cityscapes or if you're shooting 
architecture or landscapes, things where you want like a lot of detail in it. Now, personally, I love shooting with a small aperture at night because if you shoot like f8, f11 at night and you have street lights, for example, it creates this really cool star effect because of the blades of your aperture when you're stopping it down. But of course, if you wanna play around with shooting with a small aperture at night, just make sure you have something steady to put your camera onto. Uh, this will just make sure that you get the best quality image. Now, of course, there's no rules to this. It's not that every time you shoot a portrait, you have to use a large aperture, or if you're shooting a landscape that you have to use a small aperture. You can really use whichever you want, whenever you want. Another really good example is if you're shooting product photography, it can be really good to have it on a tripod and use a small aperture. And this is just so that you can get all of the details of the product in sharp focus, that it looks really crisp and clean. But really all I can encourage you to do is try shooting in aperture priority mode, try many different scenarios, different lighting conditions, see what you like the most, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Get to know your camera and practice, 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 because the more you use this, the more you practice with this, the more you're going to get comfortable with it and the better you will be able to use it to your advantage. So have you found this video helpful? Does this give you a better idea of what Aperture is and how you can use it in your photography? If so, please be sure to hit that like button and go ahead and leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin, happy shooting.